trend in weddings and events. It's called buy what you see, grow what you want, and create what you can. We're here at Basil and Bergamot Flower Farm right outside of Franklin. She's got wonderful marigolds, sunflowers. I'm here with Emily Daniels. Tell us what you call yourself, Emily. Um, I consider myself a farmer florist. I grow my own flowers um, for the arrangements that I use for weddings and events. It's a great way to give me control of like what I want to use, color schemes. Um, if I know I have a wedding with lots of yellow, I'll grow lots of yellow flowers so I can kind of plan um, what I'm going to grow for what event. So it's kind of a fun way to... So tell me your method of planting and growing. I see you have black landscape cloth. Uh -huh. To control the weeds out here, um, I found that direct seeding, it could not compete with the weeds. And I don't like to use anything to kill the weeds. So I start off, all these were started from seedlings in my greenhouse. And then I lay down the black fabric and plant each one of these little plants in the holes that I've burned with um, a tool that I, my dad actually made me. He welded this, it's a long stick with a circle and you stamp into the black plastic and it lasts for 10 years. So you only have to do it once and you just, at the end of the season, you take it up, roll it up and store it for the next year. So it's a good way to How do you weeks. decide on what varieties? I know you said depending on what colors they want for their event, but um, there must be a trick to know what kind of flowers to grow within those color schemes. Yeah, I have to do a bit of research as far as like what varieties to grow as far as like height. For cut flowers, you want really tall um, varieties like those marigolds. I'd never seen marigolds that tall before. And then when I grew them, I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> you know, they have got a lot taller than I'm used to the little short ones. So it's just doing uh, research on the varieties that are specifically made for cuts. I see so. a lots of zinnias. Mm -hmm. I see all different kinds of sunflowers. Can you, I'm going to step back. I love this one. What is this one? It's a cherry rose sunflower. Yeah, it's a real wonderful branching type. So even if the, um, you know, you don't use the main flower, sometimes the little small ones are really great for arrangements. They don't like overpower because sometimes it's hard to use sunflowers when and they're I so big. And I think what you meant was that a lot of sunflowers are a central stalk and once you cut that flower off it's mm -hmm. done whereas yeah. this is branching where you have multiple cuttings yeah. off of it. Yeah. Emily I love these zinnias tell me what variety they are. Uh, they're called Persian carpet and there's all kinds of different colors and varieties in the in the mix. Perfect for boutonnieres and small little tussy Perfect mussies. For boutonnieres. And then right in front of them, we have some kind of zinnia, and that's green envy. Green envy, yep. Right. And I love that color, especially if you can pair it with like a scarlet red zinnia. So pretty, oh, so pretty. pretty. And then right over here, we have some gorgeous, gorgeous cosmos coming up, just getting ready to blow apart here. These are called double click, so they're really, um, they're double blooms, really fluffy. Now these three varieties of flowers or types of flowers we just talked about, an average person could just sow those right in their own garden oh, yes. without starting in a greenhouse first, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. After all danger of frost and they come up prolifically. Yeah. And they'll reseed themselves. Yes. I have lots of volunteers of Cosmos coming up. Oh, well, so. great, great, great. And do you find the Cosmos hold up good for cut flowers, yes. for bouquets and mm -hmm. that? As long as you cut them at the right stage. If you cut, this one's a little far gone. If you cut them when they're just a little bit more open than this, uh -huh. um, it'll last a lot longer in the vase. Okay, great. I want to mm -hmm. go see what else you have to offer okay. here. Emily, let's talk about these tall beauties. Uh, these are Celosia, and it's a tall um, mix. It's a tall variety. They'll get a really big kind of brain looking on the top. Um, Common name is? Coxcomb. Okay. <laughs> Looks like a rooster comb. And then... The Gomfrina. The Gomfrina yeah. uh, is another mix. It's just a lot of purples, pinks, and whites. And all of these flowers, these three groups that we're going to talk about right now, they're all great for drying yes. as well, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. They're, and they'll keep this color uh -huh. even when they're dry. You just have to be careful when you hang it upside down, the seeds will go everywhere. Yeah, there's lots of seeds, that come, which <laughs> yeah. is a good thing, Which right? is a good okay. thing, yeah. So the Comfrina yeah. here, you said this was a mix. Uh-huh. Do you know what variety the... It's a, called Krumi, K-R-U-M-E, and um, it came from Johnny's Select Seeds. It's, it's a uh, variety for cutting. It's okay. really tall. And then my favorite is the strawberry field we're coming oh, the up to. strawberry field, Gumfrina. This is the first year I've grown the strawberry fields. I grew this last year. I love the red and yellow coloring, the or almost orange. Let's talk about a few things that people won't think about putting in bouquets. I see we have... Uh, that's snow on the mountain. Um, it's a variety for cutting, so it just grows really tall, makes a nice cut. 
So it's not perennial, it's from it's seed as well? It's not a perennial, I'm okay. growing it from seed. Uh -huh. And then I see you have a couple basils right next to it, and I think it's interesting to know that we preach all the time to cut those flower plumes off for culinary use, but here I see you're letting it go to flower and it makes great fresh cut bouquets. Yes, the smell is amazing, um, and the flowers look gorgeous in arrangements. It's lemon basil and it's amaretto basil. They both smell amazing in a bouquet. It's a citrusy lemon scent. It makes your house smell great when you cut it and bring it inside. And then I also see something that I hardly ever see in the South growing is tansy. And I know it's not flowering yet, but I think it's important to mention what pretty leaves it has and what good depth it could give to a bouquet. Oh, absolutely, yes. So I asked Emily to go ahead and gather some of her favorite flowers in a color scheme she was thinking would be beautiful for us. Emily, go ahead and as you're making this arrangement, tell me why you chose this vessel, the chicken wire, and all the good stuff in the bucket. Um, I don't like to use floral foam because you can't reuse it. So um, I use frogs, um, like little pins. I put that down into the vessel. I usually, for wedding work, I'll glue it, but for now, I'm not gonna glue it down there. You can always just reuse it. And then you use a wadded up piece of chicken wire and you push it down in to the I'm gonna hold this for you. Yeah. Um, and then I've got um, a color scheme here. I was thinking purples and yellows. So I have zinnias, uh, the purple basil, some cherry rose sunflowers, a few of the night queen dahlias, Mexican mint tarragon, and some green envy zinnias and limelight hydrangeas. Um, to use for that. Um, so I start picking um, a big like highlight bloom that I want to use. And you um, call it a highlight bloom because it's the deeper color? The deeper, it's the bigger. Okay. It's the show. Okay, it's the showy. Yeah, okay, the, gotcha. showy, the showy bloom. Um, and you cut it at an angle. I cut it at an angle. And then I'll just push it into the vase. And you're pushing it right on that flower frog. Right, right? onto the okay. flower frog. So if wherever you stick it, it's where you want it to go, it stays. Okay. We have one more Persian carpet zinnia. Voila! <laughs> it looks magnificent. Awesome. I love how you let things drape and and droop and kind of go. But talk about the sunflower here. What did what did you mention? Um, I like to use the natural curve of um, the flowers. So if this sunflower is facing out this way, I'll arrange it so that it kind of showcases that. Let me turn the vase arm. here so maybe that they can get a good view on how that sunflower stem is curving what you were mm -hmm. talking about. Emily, I think this has been very inspiring for our viewers to know that they can go right out in their own flower gardens and, and snip and cut and create wonderful, wonderful arrangements. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.